Okay, <clears throat> gonna take a crack at uh, explaining Cutter. Cutter is a wrapper around um, uh, Red Air 2, and uh, uh, very useful in my opinion because Red Air 2 is quite a powerful uh, program, uh, but this makes it a little bit more accessible uh, just by providing the GUI. Um, so uh, it depends on where you would want to use this sort of software. Um, if you're stuck with a CLI, then you know normal R2 would be sufficient. But uh, if you are allowed to use a GUI, uh, why not? And you can see this is their website here, cutter.re. Uh, it'll detect your OS, and it is quite a useful uh, place to download this. But if you choose to go to the uh, GitHub repo here, you will see just a little bit more uh, about downloading a release. So on Mac OS, you just have a homebrew cask. On Windows, there's a zip file. And then for Linux, there is an app image file. So if you're not familiar with app image, it's just like a distro agnostic executable. You just need to chmod it appropriately and then dot slash run the thing. So I'm on Ubuntu, and that is how I am going to run the software and I have already installed it but if you need to find a release and you choose not to go here you can find perhaps even uh, a more recent release if they're not updating their website uh, I don't know or previous releases is probably a better way uh, on the right hand side you have releases and then you have your files here and you can find previous versions I'm sure uh, down here so let us get into it um, I'm just going to do a walkthrough of what it looks like uh, at this time. Um, might do a homework level on a separate video. So, uh, ooh. what do we got here? Uh, is this ADOT out going to suffice? Just looking for a. Uh, that so much let's cd into uh, you know what let's just try it so I keep my tools in this tool chest it's a directory from my main and what I can do here is just dot slash because I have appropriately uh, assigned permissions to the cutter executable uh, cutter app image and uh, I have yet to find a way to run this in the background ah lovely I have a previous exercise here so I'll just run the run this on ASCII stir comp uh, I'm not gonna solve it but um, I'll double click this it's a previously created well no it's a program I've selected previously but they have they have uh, created the ability to uh, use projects so uh, you can save to a project so you would do file uh, and then save as and that is an option um, but this is uh, generally what you've got so it may look very similar to Ida uh, perhaps a little bit more sleek um, I certainly enjoy it they used QT uh, that that C++ uh, framework to make these super handy widgets and um, anything that you don't see that you may want to see uh, can be found in the Windows tab so that's that's super helpful uh, yes it's not as uh, as robust perhaps as Ghidorah or Ida uh, or even all the debug but um, all of the things that you may care about it supports uh, in particular oh, excuse me it supports the ability to um, just run Raid Air 2 commands and I believe you would do that here in the console although I haven't had the need to do so but Cutter does not implement all of the features uh, that Raid Air 2 has nor I, do I even know if that's possible um, so if there's anything inside R2 that need, you need to ex access uh, you don't have to leave the Cutter environment to do that um, another thing that I find useful uh, is this dashboard here which is uh, on the, the main widget page you have these various tabs and the dashboard gives you an overview of the binary itself so it's location format uh, the bits 
uh, 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 so that's like the architecture, I, su I suppose. Uh, you have the language, it'll try to detect us, but I don't know how well this would work for other languages, but it knows that this is C code. Um, it knows that it's uh, all uh, using virtual addresses, canaries, there are no crypto functions. Uh, it has uh, no execute bits, so there's probably some read-only data in there. Uh, it's position independent. Uh, oof, I don't know about that one. Uh, certainly not helpful if that's the case to us. Uh, are there relocatable, da relocatable data sections? Yes. Um, is it stripped? No. So you still have your function names and it can even detect a compiler signature. So this is super handy, an overview of the uh, binary and you can see the hashes of the binary itself and the, uh, the entropy uh, which would be able to tell you I mean basically you can glean from entropy whether or not something is compressed. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, compressed or something else is escaping me. Well um, we also have analysis info, which just gives you metadata about the program itself. You know, how many strings and functions are there. And handily, here is your strings. So that looks like a string that we might be interested in. We know these two keep popping up left, right, and center. And then this is the description. So um, quite a lot uh, here. And it gives you length uh, and ASCII type, uh, the, the type of the string. So a lot of helpful things. The functions that are imported by this um, uh, fairly, uh, fairly, uh, uh, standard for an early CTF level, uh, the ability to search exists, uh, we have the disassembly, so this might look a little bit closer to, uh, R2 as you know it, or if you haven't experimented with it, this is just, you know, basic, um, uh, disassembly, uh, but, um, we will, uh, have the same ability, uh, as we do in IDA to get this handy graph view, which you can drag around and zoom in and out on uh, and we can even go straight to um, we can go straight to a function by double clicking on that function sorry so uh, if we zoom out here we are we have the uh, main function as we know it and getting out far enough gives you a nice overview I think there's a special thing for graph overview um, but I uh, yeah you can also just zoom out so uh, that is a window that I don't care too much for at least with this small of a program uh, and you can uh, uh, read it in uh, the fashion that you see fit so it is particularly helpful uh, sorry for the squeaking sound uh, we also have this hex dump. Oh, uh, hey bud. Sorry, we have this hex dump where you can take a selection of characters, and you'll see the the various hashes and entropy of those uh, characters. And um, that is the crash course on Cutter. Um, oh, I didn't get into it, but we also have this. So this is killer. Um, so I went off to buy a textbook on Ghidra alone because I thought Ghidra was so awesome. I was like, wow, what a useful program. The decompiler is amazing. Um, it's a, fr it's freeware. It's not, uh, uh, it's not, uh, you know, some expensive piece of software. Uh, so you got to give it to them even if, uh, you know, it's a NSA product. I mean, I'm, I'm not particularly picky, you know, and I'm, I imagine by now somebody would have found the back door if one existed. So I think it's just a good piece of NSA software. That's a weird thing to say. Um, but uh, in particular, they have this decompiler. So it turns out that while Ghidra itself is this Java program, it actually uses XML to uh, connect to the C++ implementation uh, of the decompiler. So being as that is a standalone program, these Cutter R2 guys were able to just extract that and then use, I imagine, the same XML format to do communication with Cutter. So they have entirely done away with Ghidra, but they took the best part about it, in my opinion, which is the decompiler. So here we have the decompiler. Uh, it's upset there's no code. Um, if I were to switch to disassembly, uh, this is my disassembled main. Now, don't rely too heavily on dis uh, decompilation and uh, uh, decompiled code uh, because it... Um, uh, it has, you know, it'll have errors in it, uh, and, uh, uh, 
it might just be easier, especially for some of these levels, to read the assembly. Uh, that's the uh, that is the the manner the class was uh, uh, intended to be uh, uh, taught in. Uh, I suppose that makes sense, but. Um, yeah, I encourage uh, reading assembly. Uh, it certainly makes reading the code go a lot faster uh, once you actually can can do that. Then uh, reading C code will be a breeze. Um, but you know, just having the two of them is useful. And um, that's that might be all that I have uh, for this quick talk. You know, I'm not going to try to uh, uh, chat your ear off on it. So hopefully you found that useful.